Hello and welcome to Beyond Reproach. This is Stephanie Domingo. And Tux Lurzel. I'm like, I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> I'm not like, ready. where are you? I, I can see you. We come to you from Bushwick, Brooklyn, where we record on land belonging to the Lenape Nation, a nation that is one of many still very much out here doing its thing, and we'd like to acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. This is the show about scandals and scandalousness in American politics and government. Heck yes. We be drinking, we be swearing. Fuck yeah. Today, we are drinking a... Uh, a secret cocktail. A secret cocktail, yes. It is um, from the 1970s. My story today is from the 1970s. In the 1970s, cream-based cocktails were taking the country by storm. We had the White Russian, which we've done on the, on the show before already. Uh, we also had a cocktail called the Brandy Alexander, which was made with brandy, creme de cacao, and heavy cream. Mm. There was also the Grasshopper, which was Yuck. creme de menthe, yes. creme de cacao, and heavy cream. And there was the Golden Cadillac, which was Galliano, creme de cacao, and heavy cream. I wonder if you might be sensing a theme here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cream, creme de ca- cacao, yes. um, and some weird liqueur yes. that I've never had before. <laughs> So we've got these like sweet, creamy cocktails that had just a few not very boozy ingredients. They were huge in the 70s. I think that their wild popularity may have had something to do with the fact that women were just starting to sort of enter the bar scene for the first time in real numbers in the 70s. I mean, women were sort of starting to come into the bars in like the 60s, but... yeah. More in the 70s, for sure. More in the 70s? Okay. That may have had something to do with why these sort of like desserty, sweet, light, not light in alcohol, not in calories. No. (laughs) This is a meal. Um, Sort of like liqueur-based cocktails really blew up. And so today we are drinking This was their frap. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, It's like, I don't like coffee. Here's a frap. Yeah. It's like, get out of here. Three pumps of... (laughs) Classic syrup, please. (laughs) So today we're drinking something called a pink squirrel. Okay. <laughs> That's a really silly name. It's a very silly name, but I, I love it. It is made with a deep red French almond flavored liqueur called creme de noyau, along with white creme de cacao and heavy cream. Imagine that. Okay. So creme de noyau is not actually made from almonds, even though it does have a very intense almond flavor. It's actually made from the pits of apricots, peaches, and cherries. And when this sort of like deep red creme de noyau is combined and mixed with the other ingredients in the cocktail, it makes this sort of delicate pink cocktail. It looks like strawberry yogurt (laughs) or um, go-gurt. (laughs) Go-gurt. Do you remember go-gurt? Yes, I definitely do. I never really liked Gogurt, but if you froze it, oh, it was good. Really? Yeah, you eat it like a like a popsicle, but or oh, yeah. I've never even heard of doing that. Yeah, I didn't know. It's delightful. Yeah, Gogurt was something that my like my siblings had in their lunchbox, uh-huh. and I partook of them because they were just in the fridge. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, okay, this is. I didn't really get it. Not yeah, not. For it me. wasn't for me. Yeah, I'm not a big yogurt person. I like a Greek yogurt. I don't, Same. Yeah, I don't dig like a loose, sweet, fruity yogurt. I don't like fruity yogurt at all. Yeah. Like I, at all. I do put jam into my Same. yogurt. Same. Yeah. But I don't like that artificial. Totally. Like weird, just pink yeah. or purple. Totally. But this does absolutely look like a, like yeah. a strawberry yogurt. It looks like a strawberry yogurt. Yeah. Or go-gurt. Yes. And I'm suspicious. <laughs> So the, the pink squirrel was invented in the 1940s by Bryant Sharp at Bryant's Cocktail Lounge in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It may have originally been invented using ice cream rather than heavy cream. What? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the 1950s, uh, the pink decadent. squirrel. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's decadent already. Yeah, yeah. but like they would like blend it up or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. In the 50s, the pink squirrel was often served at Wisconsin's um, supper clubs, which were sort of like these old school uh, kind of meat and potatoes price fix restaurants that were sort of like communal, Mm. like big open spaces with lots of people eating meat and potatoes. (laughs) Um, Very Midwestern. Yeah. And these supper clubs were also known for serving these sort of like boozy milkshake cocktails. Is this considered boozy? I mean, it has 
some oh things technically in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what yeah. what are they putting it yeah <laughs> Um, so the pink squirrel fit right in. Yeah, okay. it's not very strong, but it has yeah. a- alcohol in it. Alcohol, okay. Yeah. In the 60s, though, Brian's it's cocktail... It's like rum raisin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a, a whisper of rum. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in the 60s, Brian's Cocktail Lounge was under new ownership, and they swapped the ice cream for heavy cream. And that's when the pink squirrel made it out of Wisconsin and into bars across the country. Ew. Okay, By sorry. the 70s, the pink squirrel was everywhere, and it stayed popular through the 90s. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, this cocktail was mentioned by name in the 1988 Tom Cruise movie Cocktail, and it was also mentioned in several 90s sitcoms, including Roseanne, Ellen, and The Nanny. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't imagine being in a bar and seeing someone drink this. Totally. <laughs> I would be so confused. Yeah. Eventually, the pink squirrel did sort of fade into obscurity. But that was probably because creme de noyau, the, the like almond flavored liqueur, is really, really hard to find. I had a really hard time finding it. Mm. So if y'all at home are trying to drink along with us, good luck. Yeah. I found it at Total I Wines. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, I'll be the judge of that. Yes. <laughs> but. I did a taste test the other day. So it sort of faded away. But now that all things 80s are, are big with the children these days. Yeah. It's vintage. Yeah. The pink squirrel is actually having kind of a, a resurgence Stop in the cocktail it. world. No. They're Fancy. Br- they're bringing back creamy drinks. Yes. Yeah. So many people are lactose intolerant. I mean, they might, maybe they'll do them with oat cream or something, you know? So, yeah, all these sort of like fancy hipster bars across the country are bringing back uh, these like creamy cocktails. And there's a bar in Williamsburg, Hmm. Brooklyn, at the McCarran Hotel. Oh, yeah. Their rooftop bar is called Xanadu. Oh, my God. Yes. We need to go there. I know. I know. Even though I'm like eye roll at the name. For them, those who them, don't know, Xanadu is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I've seen some bad... Is it the worst movie you've ever seen? No, absolutely okay, yeah. not. <laughs> okay, yeah. You you, <laughs> you watch a lot of weird, like, D movies. Yes. Um, However, the soundtrack the is The soundtrack phenomenal. is great. Yes. However, how it was described to me <laughs> and by someone named Tux <laughs> and someone named Xan... Was that it was a musical. Not that it had a great soundtrack. It was a musical, <laughs> is what I was I told. Mean, they, they, they prop themselves up as a musical. No, they're like. Sing- there was one song at the end where she moved her mouth <laughs> and music came out. It's Everything a, else was just a soundtrack. It's a, it's a movie where the, the soundtrack features heavily. But that was not yeah. how it was sold to me. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's a very drug inspired. Yes, like, absolutely. There, there's a cartoon in the middle of it. For no reason. It's real confusing. Yeah. What a ride. Cocaine and money. All of it. Yeah. Both, of, both in excess. Yeah, yeah, totally. But anyways, yeah, so there's this rooftop bar in Williamsburg uh, on top of a hotel called Xanadu. <laughs> and they are slinging pink squirrels at Xanadu. They would. When asked about the pink squirrel, Xanadu's bar manager said, quote... Being in New York at the time of the Prohibition Revival was great, and it was great to enjoy these beautiful classic cocktails of that era. But now it's fun to enjoy these cool drinks that were popular in the 70s and 80s. I could hear my joints cracking as I read that. Yeah. We were both in our 20s during this Prohibition revival in Williamsburg 15 years ago. Yeah. Everyone with their suspenders and their mustache waxed. Yes, waxed mustaches, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just makes me feel very old that, like, that's no longer cool, that they would rather be drinking cocktails that were big in the, in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> so at any rate, she the quote went on. She says, the pink squirrel is sort of one of those cocktails that our mothers drank when they were in college. It's one of those 70s trendy cocktails that people were drinking in New York, especially. Mm. So that's it. That's the pink squirrel. Let's okay. let's give ourselves a little let's taste. Do a little cheersy cheers. Oh yeah. Before let's make sure our, our yogurt doesn't spill. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid at school, learning the golden rule, teacher often used to say, "If you don't tell a lie, there's not a reason why you can't be like Washington someday." Oh, good Washington, be a merry. Oh, okay. Wow, that is delightful. 
It's so good, right? I taste the cherry. It's like fruity Ooh, and that, nutty. This is really good. It's so easy to drink. And it doesn't feel heavy in the mm. way that you would think it would, considering it's heavy cream. I was thinking it was going to be so much thicker. Yeah, it's delightful. It is a treat. Yeah. Okay, I am lies. Tim, strike all of that. Because <laughs> now I feel like a hypocrite. Now we I'm have to like, go to Xanadu. Cream base, Xanadu. <laughs> 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 oh, you're like Xanadu, cream based. Yes, please. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know. It's really interesting. Wow. I can't wait for the summer so we can go sit on a rooftop bar. And, I'm like, and oh, drink the kids, these. what do they know about cocktails? And I'm like, mm, <laughs> they weren't around 15 years ago when we were drinking the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, we were so old timey, and now the '80s is old timey. I know. Ugh. I feel my joints. Totally. But we're we're not old. No. Just you know, we feel old because of this whole. I feel especially old, and I think a lot of people feel similarly because of the pandemic. Yeah, but it doesn't aged... count. The last. <laughs> I mean, I wish it didn't count in how I feel. <laughs> totally, it's so good. It's I might really... I might have a second one before I'm... we're done. It smells so sweet. Yeah. It smells like, what does your grandfather say? Oh, marzipan. <laughs> marzipan. <laughs> yeah, it marzipan, does smell like marzipan. Which is the sweetest. It's Marzipan is so sweet that it. when I tried it for the first time, I, I was like, this is too much. Yeah. yeah. And I am me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take oh, one yeah. more sip. It's, Thank you. Um, yeah. This, was, this, this is delightful. <laughs> All right. So today... I'm going to be talking about a once powerful and well-respected politician who's largely forgotten today. Most people don't remember him. Wilbur Mills. That Wilbur... sounds a little familiar. Does he? A little bit. Yeah. I'd never heard of him. He was really big in the 70s, like at the sort of peak of his career in the early 70s. I think of another Wilbur, but okay. So Wilbur Mills was a tax policy nerd known for being serious, cautious, predictable, and kind of dull. In the 1970s, he was the longest serving member of the House Ways and Means Committee, and he was widely considered the most powerful man in government after the president. Really? Yes. Can I ask a very stupid question? Please. What does the Ways and Means Committee actually do? It's I feel tax like I should know that, and, but I don't know. It's like budget and tax policy okay. and stuff. I don't don't quote me on that because okay. I don't know like the ins and outs, but yeah, it's a lot it of sounds it sounds boring. As was Wilbur Mills. It okay. was like that his whole ways career was built That's on so being vague. The Ways and Means Committee is the ones who are sort of in, supposed to be in charge of investigating Trump's taxes. Okay, that's right. Maybe that's how I've heard yeah. about them recently. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, in New York? No, no, no. Uh, um, the black representative from Compton. Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Maxine Waters <laughs> I... is on the Ways and Means Committee, and she was all excited about being able to get her hands on Trump's taxes. Can I, but then... can I share with you why I was able to pull up her name? Because my mom is a hater, and she <laughs> always talks about her bad wig. <laughs> Your mom, I. Your mom also hated uh, Shirley Chisholm's hair too. Correct. Right? Yeah, Correct. That. You are. That is accurate. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. And I, and I, in my head, I'm just like, who was that bad wig? And it came yeah. up. Yeah, there was talk about she was all excited to get her hands on Trump's taxes, but then you know nothing ever came from that. I think they were supposed to be dragged in front of the AG in New York, and like everything, it's been put off again. Appeals, appeals, appeals. How does he have money for lawyers like this? Yeah, nobody Wait, knows. Who, whose money is this? I feel like he just keeps hiring people that he's like, I'll pay you, I'll pay you next to, I'll go ahead. Oh, you. yeah, <laughs> yeah, the wire transfer. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very like Anna. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> inventing, inventing Anna, if you have not watched it on Netflix, really, really good. She's always sending wire transfers. Her dad is. He's, he's with like a, a Russian accent and a recording device. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So the Ways and Means Committee, I know that Wilbur Mills was like a super huge tax policy nerd. And everyone was like, oh, there's no, like, he wasn't out drinking. He was like staying up studying the tax code. Yeah. He was reading accounting books. Totally. One article said that he held, quote, a near absolute sway over any legislation with fiscal consequences. Which is all legislation. Yeah, And one of his colleagues once told a reporter, I never vote against God, motherhood, or Wilbur Mills. <laughs> he was even being considered for a seat on the Supreme Court. Oh, wow. 
That is until the incident. Oh. Yes. Okay. In October of 1974, around 2 a.m., a speeding, swerving Lincoln Continental was pulled over near Washington's downtown mall. As the car came to a sudden stop, a 38-year-old exotic dancer Mm. in an evening gown jumped Mm. out, ran barefoot down the road yelling in Spanish and English, and jumped into the chilly waters of the Tidal Basin Reservoir in front of the Jefferson Memorial. That is a scene. Yes. A 38-year-old exotic dancer jumping into a basin? Yes. Running barefoot, screaming in Spanish. Okay. That (laughs) is... You're setting the scene. Yes. Back in the car, the 65-year-old congressman was sloppy drunk, (gasps) reeked of booze. What? His face was scratched and bleeding. There were three other people in the car, but his wife was not one of them. No charges were filed. And the congressman was driven home by the police. But the splash from that jump into the Tidal Basin rippled out into one of D.C.'s most infamous sex scandals. Ooh. Okay. Yes. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I like an old-fashioned sex scandal. Mm-hmm. So I would like to propose a toast. Yeah. Thankfully, I have a little bit of my cocktail left. It's so good. So good. To normalizing sexual adventures. Cheers to that. Mm. So as long as everyone in a relationship is is agreed and on board, there's nothing wrong with an open relationship and sexual freedom. Um, yes, please. Where, <laughs> where can I sign up for this? Yeah. Wilbur Mills served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1939 to 1977. Okay. Being a New Deal Democrat from Arkansas, he frequently voted for policies that helped the poor but never specifically voted for anything that specifically helped black people. I mean, yeah. he's Surprise. a white man from Arkansas. Yeah. Color me shocked. Yeah. <laughs> he once said, I couldn't stay in Congress unless I voted the way I do on these highly emotional issues. Ooh, emotional. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wink. Which, to me, feels like a really gutless way of absolving himself it from is. voting against civil rights legislation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just because he viewed racism as the price of admission in yeah. politics. He's like, this is America. And yeah. like, I... Sure, I mean, but was... like, you you should be beyond reproach. You should be better You than should this. be. <laughs> yeah. You should be. And yet he looks around at his colleagues and he's like, this is... Uh, we are the same? Yeah. Civil rights? No thanks. Yeah. He probably had money. But... Later in his career, he did do some good things for this country, which today that's what he's best known for. During the Kennedy and Johnson administrations, when these sort of progressive social policies were becoming more popular, yeah, he took a very totally, yeah, yeah. He took an active role as an architect for policies like Social Security, unemployment insurance, Medicare, oh really, pension reform, and tax reform that that would benefit the working class. That's massive. Yeah. So that's what he's best known for today. If you sort of like look up the legacy of Wilbur Mills, that's what you're going to find. So by the 1970s, Congressman Mills was arguably one of the most powerful and well-respected politicians in the country. A grandfather in the twilight of a long and distinguished career, he also seemed to be the model of seriousness and stability. He was a grandfather in the 70s? How old was he? He was old? He was 65 uh, that night. That the car was pulled over, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yikes, okay. But so things started to change after he tried to run for president in 1972, but oh. he lost his party's nomination to George McGovern. Okay. The following summer, he walked into the Silver Slipper Strip Club in D.C. and asked to meet one of their headlining performers, Fanny Fox, a.k.a. the Argentine Firecracker. Okay. So Fanny's real name was Annabelle Baristella. She was born in a small town in Argentina and as a child wanted to become a doctor. Mm. When she was 20 years old, she was in uh, her pre-med studies in Buenos Aires when she met and married a cabaret pianist named Eduardo Batistella. Before she knew it, she had three kids and a husband who cheated often and openly. Yikes. To try and keep an eye on him, she started following him to his club gigs, going with him just to sort of... Oh, Make okay. Sure. I'm like yeah. following in like a no, car? No, she would like go along like, with him. Honey, yeah. leave him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and one night after she was there a lot, one night one of the club's owners asked her if she wanted to join the dance review at the club. 
She loved the attention she got from it. But I she, bet. Yeah. But, but she, she was hot as shit. She, yeah, yeah. But she also loved making her own money, even more than the attention she got. I mean. She was like, hell yeah. Uh, obviously. Totally. The more successful she became, the less she cared about Eduardo's cheating. Uh, and they, this is why men are mad on TikTok. <laughs> totally. They're like, women think they're so good. It's like, we don't think we're so good. We just don't need you yeah. <laughs> for, to meet our material like needs. Totally. So yeah. you actually have to be a good person for us to fuck with you. This is, <laughs> this is oppression. I know. <laughs> they're like, <"Rah!" laughs> They moved around a lot looking for work. He didn't really bring in very much money. And she was, you know, she was bringing in money finally too. But like, they still had to kind of hop around Mm. in the early 60s they landed in miami where a friend offered to get her a job at a strip club at first she was kind of hesitant about having to take her clothes off to dance but her friend insisted that it was going to be more like burlesque than than pole dancing Mm. so she agreed pole dancing is fucking hard yeah i can't yeah the feats of athleticism involved i think everyone who listens to this podcast regularly knows that my hands are decorative (laughs) and i cannot i cannot not even pull myself i can't hold myself with my hands yeah my lower body's too heavy (laughs) what is the what do they call those like white ladies fitness stripper fitness oh yeah yeah Yeah, i could never (laughs) (laughs) but so her career really took off when she started doing this sort of burlesque acts in Mm -hmm. Miami, but her agent told her there was even more money in Maryland than in Miami. So they moved to Baltimore and that's when she started using the stage name Fanny Fox. The more money she spent on these elaborate glittering costumes and cosmetic surgery, the bigger her career seemed to get. Mm -hmm. By the time she started working in D.C. at the Silver Slipper, she was being billed as the Argentine firecracker. One article said, quote, Patrons of the local burlesque circuit were captivated by her elaborate costumes, complete with five-foot-tall headdresses and tropical-colored ostrich and pheasant feathers. What? As well as the artfulness with which she removed them. Five-foot-tall, like on like your head? Like Vegas showgirl stuff, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No chicken feathers here. (laughs) (laughs) Then, in the summer of 1973, she was introduced to Congressman Wilbur Mills. In just over a year, the whole country would know her name. Wow, that was quick. Yeah. Because around 2 a.m. on October 7th, 1974, two U.S. Park Police officers spotted a silver-blue Lincoln Continental with no headlights on, speeding and swerving on the road near the Jefferson Memorial. It appeared that there was some kind of a fight going on in the front seat. They pulled the car over, and the next thing they knew, this woman with curly auburn red hair and a long evening gown jumped out of the front passenger side and bolted barefoot down the road, yelling in a mix of English and Spanish. In a panic, she climbed over the stone parapet along the tidal basin and leapt Head first into no. the cold, dark water. Did she die? No, no, no. Oh, no. good. Okay. One officer jumped in to save her, and he decided to handcuff her when she tried to do it again. Wait, she jumped into the water and then got out and tried to jump into the water again? He, went, he jumped in to save her, pulled her out, and as soon as they were back out, she was like, I'm going back in there. Get me out of here. Wow. Back in the car, they found Congressman Mills and three other occupants of the car, all very drunk. Mr. Mills's glasses were broken. He was bleeding from his nose and scratches on his face. And Miss Fox had two black eyes. Oh my God. Yeah. (gasps) Hearing something about a commotion over the police scanner, a TV cameraman rushed to the scene to figure out what was going down. When he got there, he saw a man who looked a lot like one of the most powerful politicians in the country. So he started to approach the scene. The cops saw him coming and rushed everyone back into their car to kind of get them away from the the reporter. One officer got into the car, into the driver's seat, and drove the group home. The other officer... Wait, what? Yeah. Like, you guys are fine. I'm going to take you home. You're too drunk to drive, but let me take you home. to have power. Yeah, I know. You can just beat up a woman while drunk, driving, Mm -hmm. and then just be driven home. Yeah. 
Yeah, he wasn't actually driving while he was beating her up. But, but, but still, <laughs> he's, in, fine. he's involved in <laughs> yeah, an yeah, assault yeah. Totally. and there's drinking happening on yeah. the road. The other officer took Fanny to a nearby psychiatric hospital for observation because they were worried that her repeated attempts to jump into the tidal basin were a suicide attempt. Did they investigate the fact that she had two black eyes and that it, she was being abused? No. Oh, cool, it cool, was cool. the seventies. Oh, okay, it was fine. I feel like the seventies is when they, when like marital rape became like bad. Oh yeah, is yeah. when they made a law against it. That's for another episode. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so no charges were filed and no names were mentioned in the police report. Wow. However, it didn't I take need long to get on the ways and means committee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then start my life of crying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like wearing a top hat, like just being, I have a, a cape. Twirling a fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like going out of my way to be evil. Yeah. Dastardly. Yes, dastardly. <laughs> it's even better than being evil. <laughs> so it didn't take long for rumors to start to swirl around town about this powerful congressman and the unidentified woman who looked to be about half his age. So there were, like, this guy who had the camera, he was able to, like, publish he, a story? Like, he didn't publish hey, a, sport, a story right away, but okay. he sort of was like... Pss, 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 pss. Oh, okay, got yeah. it. Okay. Nixon had just resigned two months earlier from oh, the Watergate shit. scandal, and the public was hungry for some hot, juicy <sighs> goss. Goss. Mm. <laughs> Give me that goss. So this cameraman who was on the scene that night refused to let this go. He smelled the scoop. He's like, yeah, I, I mean, obviously. Yeah. Mills was up for re-election in less than a month. Oh, shit. Yes. So he had one of his aides officially deny that he had been anywhere near the scene that night. You done fucked up. Yes. We have you, sir. Yeah, exactly. But there was no no names in the police report. That was like the but first thing the video. reporter went to the police station was like, let me get the report. And they're like... There's nothing in it. But practically overnight, this story was all over the nightly news and splashed across the front pages of the newspapers. It didn't take long for reporters to identify that the woman who was taken to the hospital was Annabelle Battistella, a 38-year-old married mother of three. It took them even less time to learn that Mrs. Battistella had, until very recently, worked as a stripper at the Silver Slipper under the name Fanny Fox. After interviewing a few dancers at the Silver Slipper, it came out that about a year earlier, Congressman Mills had come in to see the Argentine firecracker and quickly had become a fixture at the club. He frequently came in with big groups of friends, ran up huge bar tabs, buying expensive champagne, and always paid in cash. Mm, okay. Apparently, one night, he had even made serious inquiries about buying a share of the club. But when that didn't work out, Fanny Fox suddenly stopped dancing there. Oh. Yeah. After that, though, the two of them would still come into the club together every week or so, according to these two dancers that were interviewed. They would often get drunk and have loud arguments in front of the whole club. Messy. They had one such argument the same night that Fanny jumped into the reservoir. Upon further investigation, they learned the fact that after 25 years in the same apartment, Congressman Mills and his wife Polly had recently moved into a luxury apartment complex in Arlington called the Crystal Towers. It just so happened that Fanny Fox and her husband also lived in the same complex. Oh my God, messy. Yes. This is too much. I know. And with that, let's, let's take a break. I yeah. think it's time to take a little break. This is Brandon from Peculiar Picture Show, the podcast that talks about movies, maladies, and mental health. And this is Maria, also from that podcast. So we were wondering, do you like movies? Do you like mental health? Oh boy, do I ever, Brandon. Well then, I've got a podcast for you. Peculiar Picture Show is the podcast for you because it is about movies and mental health. That's right. We use movies to talk about mental health issues like borderline personality disorder, social issues like systemic racism, and other things. Like how bad Shakespeare in Love was. Yeah, sometimes we just talk about how bad the movie is. And we really talked about that one. But sometimes we have games. Uh, Maria used to be a teacher, and so she loves to quiz people. 
I really do. So check us out online at peculiarpicture.show. That's our website, and you can stream all episodes there. Or you can find us on any major podcast channel. We are back with fresh pank squirrels. Yeah, it's surprisingly delicious. I like couldn't Y'all, wait I... to make another one. So we got our drinks. We're back. And back on Capitol Hill, yeah, Congressman uh-oh. Mills's colleagues could not believe what they were reading about him. They had known this man for years. And to them, he had always been this sort of like distinguished like, family man. Like buttoned down. Totally. Yeah, you showed me a picture of him yeah. before this scandal. I'm like, this man, I think my, <laughs> what I said was, this man's having sex. Yeah, I know. He <laughs> looks like, he looks like Mr. Magoo. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I feel like Mr. Magoo could get it more than this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has sort of like kind of thinning, like slicked back hair and a big sort of bulbous nose, ill-fitting suit. Sex work is work. Totally. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And I would say the hardest work. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who, who could do that is should have all of the money. Mm-hmm. We should be giving them all their money. <laughs> He's keeping this man, this powerful man, happy. But so he was known for <laughs> specific... I'm sorry. I was just thinking about that meme I sent you. I think it was on TikTok of this woman having all these little like post-its. She's mad that she has to work, oh. basically. <laughs> yeah. And she, one of the post-its is like, sugar daddies want sugar. I know. <laughs> wah, wah. God totally. <laughs> like, ew, no. Yeah. Just give me the money. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Don't look at me or touch me. Come on. Gross. <laughs> Gross. I'll send you a picture of yes. this. How's that? Yeah. But yeah, so this this guy was known for his sort of like excessive caution and, and moderation. And many it was house all members. Knack. Yeah. I mean, it hadn't been for years, yeah. but then sort of start, things were changing in, was the, in the 70s. Compartmentalizing. Yeah. Like totally. he had his job and then his like wild. Yeah. Sexual appetite. I think that what probably had happened, what had happened was. I was about to say, what probably <laughs> happened, like, is that English? <laughs> when he tried to run for president and lost the oh. nomination, he was like, I've been doing this shit since 1939 and yeah. you can't fucking. And I'm like, yeah. supposedly the most powerful man here yes. next to the president and okay. y'all can't fucking vote for me. Fuck I, all y'all. Agreed. I'm going to live my life. Yeah. I mean. I, for like, like the first time in my life. Oh, so he had been holding it in. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, I'm going to be president one day. Totally. Because I'm like doing all the things right. Exactly. <gasps> oh. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, I'm not going to be the president. How about. You can all go fuck Yeah, yourselves. and let me make up for lost time. Exactly. I could have been having wild sex 20 years ago. 100%. Yeah. Many House members said when that I they had... When I less like a toad. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. I'm not that mean. Cream makes me mean. <laughs> Many House members said that they had never even seen him take a single drink in his entire career. Wait, what? Yeah. He, he didn't drink? Well, he was shit-faced when he... Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. wow. Some he was of them... probably drinking this and getting I... shit-faced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's over there drinking pink squirrels for sure. Yeah. So some of his colleagues tried to explain the incident away, saying that he had recently started taking pain medication. Okay, because so of, uh, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, but like people know that this was him now. Like, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had recently had surgery and he was taking pain meds because he had like back pain from the surgery. So a lot of his colleagues were like, oh, it's like he's adjusting to the pain meds. Like he's just acting weird. Oh. Hmm. Other people, however, started saying that he was starting to slip after his failed presidential run. And this was sort of further proof that he was like losing touch. Okay. Yeah. So Mills decided it was time to make a statement. The, the story had gotten away with or away from him. Uh-oh. So he said, he came out and officially said that he and his wife... Had... <laughs> D- don't bring her into <laughs> this! No, 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 no. Yeah. No, start over. <laughs> She's not involved. <laughs> this is trash. I know. He and his wife had just recently moved and, quote, our new neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Eduardo Battistella offered us every assistance during our moving ordeal. Oh, And since that time, our families have grown to become close friends. She's just a close family friend, Stephanie. Who's helping with the move. Yes, exactly. Really neighborly. He explained that he and his wife, Polly, were planning a party for their neighbors and some friends, 
when unfortunately Polly broke her foot. His wife Polly had broken her foot and they couldn't host the party anymore. Not wanting to spoil things, she told him to take their friends out for a night on the town instead of hosting the party at home. Okay. That, like, they had originally been planning to stay home, invite the Botticellas and some people over to their house. So Mr. Botticella is hanging out with Polly? Yeah. And Polly knew Fanny. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it gets weirder. I'll, I'm, is... I'm going to kind of, like, the way I'm telling this, I'm, like, just telling you what the public knew so far. So he says... His wife, after she broke her foot, told him, take everyone out for a night in the town instead of hosting this party at home. And while they were out, Mrs. Bonestella had too much to drink, and he decided they should wrap it up and everyone should go home. He says, quote, the man I asked to drive was unfamiliar with my car, and among other things, in the glare of the lighted streets, neglected to turn on the headlamps. Stop this. As we proceeded home, Mrs. Botticella attempted to leave the There's car. There's too many words. This is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I, nope. Nope. <laughs> Mrs. Botticella <laughs> attempted to leave the car, and I attempted to prevent it. In the ensuing struggle, her elbow hit my glasses and broke them, resulting in a number of small cuts around my Jesus nose. Christ. About this time, the car oh, was stopped no, by the park police. Oh, no, not about this time. Yes. <laughs> And Mrs. Botticella was able to open the door and leave the car. The next thing I knew, she was in the water. Of course, I am embarrassed and humiliated by the entire turn of events, and I want to apologize for the discomfort my involvement caused all of the well-wishers who have expressed their genuine concern for my family, especially Polly, who is blaming herself for not accompanying us that night, even with her broken foot. Again, keep Polly's name out of it. <laughs> She didn't ask for this. <laughs> mm, Polly's kind of no angel. But, uh, yeah. no. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you also, don't know that yet. But also, no one is no angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after this, Mills went back to Arkansas for a month to campaign for his reelection. Luckily for him, this apology worked. He won his 19th term to Congress Jesus. in November. While he was in Arkansas, Fanny went to South America to finally get a divorce from Eduardo, Mr. Baristella. Okay. So now that it looked like Wilbur's career was sort of going to be okay, Fanny decided it was time for her to focus on her own career. Before they'd met, she was doing very well for herself. She was bringing in about $500 a week at the Silver Slipper, which in That's 1970s money. money was around $3,000 a week. Damn. But after the plunge into the tidal basin, the entire country knew her name and wanted to see her. Of course. She had stopped dancing because Wilbur asked her to. Oh. Okay. But then after this, she was like, no, I'm, I'm getting back in there. No. They're about to pay me all the coins. Yeah. You're not paying my rent. Get yeah, out exactly. Of here. Well, I think you might have been. Cause Whatever. Still. But like, she's like, I need more than rent. Yeah. Motherfucker. Exactly. I need to secure the bag. Yeah. So she ditched the uh, Argentine firecracker. I Monica. love that she's doing Monica. this at 38. Totally. Hot. Yeah, yeah. She was a fucking babe. Yeah. 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 I mean, she'd had some. She had some. Some things. She had some work done. Yeah. She'd I'm been not mad retouched a little. And. Yeah. Who cares? She ditched her, her Argentine firecracker moniker and started marketing herself instead as the Tidal Basin Bombshell. I love that rebrand. Yes. The Tidal Basin Bombshell. <laughs> Suddenly, she was touring the country and bringing in $3,500 a week. Holy in shit. In today's money, that's like twenty two grand a week. Holy shit. Yes. Oh, Wilbur who? Yeah, exactly. Um, W Wilbur what? Yeah, Wilbur uh, Mills. Maybe Wilbur, Wilmer Valderrama. Don't... And that is a maybe. <laughs> maybe. That is a maybe. Like, he has to bring other things. Yeah. $22,000 a week. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, Wilbur still tries to talk to her? Bless yeah. his heart. I know. Aww. Well, just as... Things are starting to look like they're going to work out for everyone. Wilbur got reelected. She's making all this money. Wilbur did something truly mind-boggling. 
one night she was at a club performance in Boston. She's touring all over the country. She's in Boston. He showed up stinking drunk, reportedly after drinking two bottles of vodka. Two bottles. This old man who doesn't drink. At the end of her act, he stumbled into the wings, and as he teetered he's lucky just he's off still stage, alive. I know, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's literally standing just behind the curtain of the stage, like, like swaying and teetering. And she suddenly realized the audience could see him, oh. depending on where you're sitting in the theater. Some people could see him. So she's like, okay, I got to do something. And she tries to make light of the situation. She says, ladies and gentlemen, I have a visitor for you. And he wants to say hello. Mr. Mills, where are you? No. Here I am, he says. No. With a, with a grin on his face oh, as he walks onto stage. Oh, goodness. The crowd began to holler and whistle and stomp. Wow, he's on the stage. He grabs a microphone. No, he doesn't. Walks to center stage and Jesus. he's like rambling incoherently, completely shit faced. Oh I, I want to throw a blanket over him. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah. No one look at him. I know. Grandpa's sick. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to tell him stories that don't go anywhere. <laughs> so Fanny kissed him on the cheek <laughs> and kind of ushers him off stage. Like, let's go. Let's, yeah. Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. But there's reporters backstage. Oh, no. They had Fuck. found out that he was coming to Boston. And we're like, well, we know where he's going. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Why else would he be going why to Boston while she's there? Boston? So they show up at the theater. He Ooh. gets, she's like, gets the cane and like yeah. pulls him off stage. Yeah. And the reporters are back there <laughs> like, oh, hi, what's going on? And he proceeds to give one of the most embarrassing press conferences oh ever captured on film. I, oh, it's on film. Yeah. I don't, I couldn't find it, but oh. it, yeah. So he's slurring his words, could barely stand. Oh, man. And he tells reporters that he's going to take over Fanny's talent management. Oh, my God. He's going to make her a movie star. And his wife is all for it. She wants him to go for it. Leave Polly out of this. (laughs) Yeah. So he, (laughs) when pressed, the the reporters are like, wait, what? No, I don't. I don't. I do have a photo of him at this thing, and she's kind of just like, ee, what's happening? Oh and he's like, god. yay! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. So, I really don't like when people are publicly embarrassed. So that's him. He's all like, woo! And she's looking down like, oh, oh my yeah. god. Oh yeah, she's wishing she was on a different plane of existence. And here, she's like trying to smile for the camera, yeah. but he's like, Rah! <laughs> The press is kind of like, okay, so what are you talking about now? What's, what's happening? <laughs> And he starts to get angry. Oh. And he's like, all of Fanny's future performances are canceled. I'm going to make her a movie star, but she's not doing this anymore. She's this... not dancing anymore for y'all. And then he's, oh. he's slurring his words. And kind of out of nowhere, I don't know if he was he, somebody asked him something, but he goes, this won't ruin me. Nothing can ruin me. <laughs> yes. It ruined him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It ruined him. You can't say <laughs> that, that was out it. loud. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. Back in Washington. That his... was supposed to be internal I know. Monologue. He's saying he's saying the quiet part. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could ruin me. You're not an evil villain. <laughs> like, you're not in a Batman film. Stop. So back in Washington, his colleagues turned against him. They were like, okay, we tried to give you the benefit after the, or the benefit of the doubt after the first time. But now, like, no, girl, you got to go. So they basically sort of like force him to resign his chairmanship from the Ways and Means Committee. Mm. And after that, he joined Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, okay. And he actually went into a treatment facility for like months, months and months, was gone, just disappeared. When he came out, he claims that he has no memory of the entire year of 1974. Uh, I don't remember the entire year. Sir, sir. That's not how a blackout works. I know. Let alone that night in front of reporters in Boston. No, he doesn't remember the entire year. Oh, well, that's good because we have the footage. Yeah, yeah. This was you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put these pictures I have of of the two of them on on our uh, Instagram. 
So he blames the whole thing, all oh, of God. it. Polly. On, <laughs> yeah, it's Polly's fault. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> Blaming. <Polly>. <laughs> <laughs> I blame it all on pink squirrels. <laughs> um, no, he said he was mixing alcohol with his pain meds. And that's why he doesn't remember an entire year of his life that's when he was still a, a lawmaker, legislator. <laughs> like, okay, so you're saying that you shouldn't be an officer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that he was sober, he kind of realized how disastrous his relationship with Fanny had been and decided that he needed to focus on fixing his marriage with Paul. What do you mean? They were just neighbors. (laughs) He was helping. (laughs) They were helping her move or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. With his career in tatters, he left office in 1977. He like, you know, he finished out his term but didn't run for re-election for a 20th term to Congress. And he became an advocate for recovering alcoholics until his death in 1992. Okay. He like devoted a bunch of money. There's like treatment facilities with his name all okay, over that's them. Like, cool. yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, That's really cool, actually. Yeah. After that night in Boston, Fanny's career continued to blow up. Of course. But she's ruined a high profile man's <laughs> life. Like, yeah, yeah. I would want to see Everyone her and give her money for just for that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Unfortunately, these like shady club owners trying were trying to like take advantage of her notoriety. They were oh. like, "Oh, come to our club, but then, you know, we'll pay you well." But then they started doing all this weird shit to try and make headlines and get more people in the in the seats. Mm. One night she was in Orlando in December, and one of the club owners arranged to have the police show up and arrest her for indecent exposure, even though she didn't. She was doing burlesque. Like That's fucked up. Yeah. The judge dropped the charges because there was no evidence that there was any indecent exposure in the first place. But after that, she was like, you know what? Fuck this. Yeah. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going and back she, to Fanny. Yeah. So she gave up her dancing career. But instead, she started making the rounds as sort of like a, like a B-list celebrity. She's doing like TV talk shows. Okay. Going to, like, Vegas nightclubs Mm -hmm. and just sort of being, like, a personality, you know? She also appeared in an off-off-Broadway play called Women Behind Bars about a women's prison starring Divine as the prison matron. Oh, my God. There's footage of... Or, not footage, but there's photos of this, too. Yeah, I'll have to put the the photo of Divine. Is it a musical? I don't know if it was a musical, but apparently it was, like, a revival of a play from the 50s. It's supposed to be super camp. Like, I I hope that there's footage of this because I really want to see it. But there are there are photos of her and Divine together, and they're like prison outfits. Yeah, I need to find these photos. I know. She also had a few starring roles in some low budget films, including 1975's Posse from Heaven, about a stripper who becomes a guardian angel to a cowboy. There was this really long review, basically saying like how bad this movie is. But in the end, it was like, is it good? Hell no! But you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. Mm, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's your type of film. Yeah. So she also released a tell-all memoir oh, about okay. the whole thing. Of course. Called Fanny Fox, The Stripper and the Congressman. Mm. The press release read, she had the ways, he had the means. Together, they made the front pages. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> and with that, the public finally learned what really happened between the two of them. They really believe that shit, though? The, like, well, so her... she's say, she releases this book saying, like, this is what actually happened. She wrote that when they met, after the first time he showed up to the Silver Slipper that first night, they became sort of friendly and almost immediately fell in love. This is Fanny's telling of the story. Okay. Quickly fell in love and started talking about marriage. Really? Mills is going to divorce Polly and oh. marry Fanny. Polly Mills knew about the whole thing and kind of didn't care. Okay. She was over him. He was over her. I mean, I get it. They were both sort of alcoholics. Wilbur and Polly were mm-hmm. both like getting drunk and getting into fights all the time at home. Yeah. She's like, if you want him, fucking take, take him. him. Uh, Fanny was also kind of saying that like, Polly was like, you don't want him. Of course. Don't do not do know. it, girl. I mean, women are usually looking out for other women. Yeah. And like, hey, you can have him, but like, he's the worst. So, you're you're going to see yeah. it eventually, but like, he's the fucking Totally. Worst. So Polly was kind of like on board and trying to help cover things up for the two of them. But oh. at the same time was like, Fanny, Get out. don't do it. Get out. You're yeah. Better, you're better than this. At one point after Fanny became pregnant, Polly <gasps> talked her into getting an abortion. Polly did. Oh. 
to try and help, like save Wilbur's career because Polly knew where her bread was buttered too. You yeah. know, Polly was not working. No, this yeah. is back. I feel like women could get bank accounts in the late seventies, so maybe this is the late. But 70s. she was she's already like yeah, in her sixties. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Fanny admitted that they did have a very sort of volatile relationship. Um, she said that just before they were pulled over on that fateful night, that they were literally beating the shit out of each other in the car, that she was hitting him, kicking him, biting him, screaming. She smashed his glasses. Did she have which, alcohol issues as well? Oh, she was, or? she was also, I don't think she was as much of like a drunk drunk yeah, that he was. Yeah, drinking two bottles of yeah. vodka. No, I don't think she was like that, but she definitely drank a lot. Especially when she was around him. Mm. But so she said that she smashed his glasses in their in their fight in the car that night, which is why his face was bleeding. Nice. Like literal pieces of his glasses like went into his face. Oh, no. And he had bruised her face in the sort of commotion. That's why she struggle. had the two black eyes. Yeah, yeah. When the sirens blared, she said, she panicked, worrying both about his career and the possibility that an arrest could jeopardize her recently acquired citizenship. She said she just panicked. Yeah. I had to just get away. So I dashed over the stone parapet near the bridge over the tidal basin and I dove in head first. Down in the dark, deserted water, I dived very deep, not knowing or caring where I would come up. My long, expensive evening dress lapped around my legs, but I felt nothing. She said that after that night, Polly agreed to help she them. She sounds like she was drunk. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. So Polly agreed to help them cover the whole thing up and kind of make it look like it was just a big misunderstanding that, you know, they were supposed to have a party, but Polly broke her foot. Did like, she break her foot? Like I think she had actually broken oh, her foot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, did he break her foot for her? <laughs> He's like, I'll, I'll fix it. <laughs> we need yeah. a story. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Even after Wilbur had gone to rehab and seemingly sort of like abandoned Fanny for Polly to try and fix his marriage, Fanny still believed that they were like deeply in love and that someday that she and Wilbur were going to be married. She wrote in this book, she wrote, I don't know how the final chapter of Wilbur and Fanny will read. We have consummated a love that no amount of scandal or press can destroy. Even though the labels stripper and congressman are completely incongruous, there was never anything but harmony in our hearts. Que sera, sera. Wow. Okay. Go on, Fanny. Uh, I mean, go off. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> They're like beating the shit out of each other, having that's screaming really matches, sick. like shit faced in front of strip clubs. Like, yeah, honey. He's, and he's also... Go into therapy. This yeah. is not love. He's a 65-year-old man that looks like Mr. Magoo and you're fucking hot. Yeah, there's no reason. And you're for making this. you're making more money than yeah. he is. Like I mean, it's it just tells you how deep it goes. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, she also about... came from this like horrible relationship where Eduardo didn't give a shit about her, didn't yeah. even look at her. Hmm. And finally she's met a guy that's like obsessed with yeah. her. But and he then did, she gets you know... into an industry and everyone's obsessed with her. Yeah. But he's like trying to make her give up her career so that He can, like, have her all to himself. The whole thing is just mess. Toxic. So after this, after the book and after, you know, her sort of, like, brief rise to fame and these movies and stuff, most of the articles that I found about this whole story said that she moved back to Argentina and was never heard from again. Oh, good for her. Oh, shit. No. No, she's... It's complete bullshit. Really? I mean... She's in a U.S. citizen now, so, like, why would she leave, Why would she just disappear? Yeah. And, like... It's just lazy journalism. If you had, like, looked... Yeah, oh, no. You're like, oh, she's not directly in front of me, so, like, ah, I guess she's gone. I, I don't see her. <laughs> yeah. She's she's dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just in the wind. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so, in reality, what, what had happened was... A few years later, she kind of finally figured out that, like, Wilbur's not coming back for her. Uh And you know what? Like, maybe I don't actually want his ass anyways because he looks like Mr. Magoo. Come on. Um, This was not your future. Yeah. This was your past. (laughs) Totally. Yeah, yeah, Your embarrassing past. But we forgive you. (laughs) So she meets this, like, contractor who, in my mind, is, like, muscly and beautiful. You know what I mean? Please, let him be that. Yeah. Uh, Named Daniel Montgomery. She meets this guy and they get married. She drops the name Fanny. She's not dancing anymore. She Mm. drops the name Fanny. And as Mrs. Annabelle Montgomery, they move together to Florida. 
and she decided to go back to school. You know, when she was a kid, she wanted to be a doctor. So finally, she goes back to school. In 2001, she earned a master's degree in marine science (gasps) in Florida. What? And in 2004, she got another master's in business administration. Amazing. Both with honors. Oh my Magna God. cum laude. Both I love, of them. Yeah. I love this story. I know. I love the way this wraps up for her. Totally. And, you know, she was she was doing great. They had another kid together. Oh. They had they she had all this money, so they like bought a huge yeah. house. Yeah. Like, and she's in Florida, so yeah. there's like there's like what, no property taxes in Florida? Um, something ridiculous? I don't know about that. He would know, being on the Ways and Means Committee, he could tell you. <laughs> she did just pass away last year, but at eighty four years old, she passed away okay. in, in February of twenty twenty one. So now, obviously, this whole, like, open marriage thing didn't really work out in their favor in this situation. Yeah. You know, that's not because, it's not because it couldn't work. It's just because they were both fucking shit-faced the whole time. And he was a disaster. But I am glad, you know, even though that this, like, 38-year-old hottie had to hook up with the 65-year-old man with a bad suit and Coke bottle glasses... I'm glad that they got to have some fun. They both got something out of it. She totally. got a fabulous career. Yeah. He got to have probably yeah. the best sex of his life that he probably oh, remembered until the day he died. Definitely. You know, even though it didn't really work out, I think it was good for both of them. Some people listening might be hearing this story and think like, oh, but his career, his career was ruined and her heart was broken. You know, his career was in the toilet already, or yeah. at least... On its way into the toilet, and <laughs> on its way, into yeah, the toilet. it was. It had left the. Uh, it was. It passed the rim. Yeah, <laughs> it exactly. Was not, there was no splash. Totally. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what really ruined his career was a mix of hubris and vodka. That'll do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing can ruin me. I mean, the fact that he said that out loud. Calm down. Come on. Calm down. You put the nail in your own coffin. You know, I think that if he had kept his cool, if he wasn't such a I mean, look at mess, him. Look at him. He's not keeping any sort of I cool. Know. But it, like if he had kept his cool and they had been sort of more realistic about their relationship together and, and like what they were getting out of it mm-hmm. and where it was going to go. And they weren't talking about like, I'm going to divorce Polly and we're going to get married. I think alcohol played a huge role oh, in absolutely. like a lot of this, like these feelings yeah, that they yeah. were having, these strong feelings. Yeah. It could have really worked out for... Absolutely. They could have had... If they um, were different people. Totally. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they yeah totally. Just, this could have worked out. I'm like, calmer heads. They don't sound like calm heads. Yeah. <laughs> but also, you know, in the end, like, he got to have great sex, and she got a fabulous fucking career out of it. Oh, yeah. And she still found love in the end. Yeah. So really, like, this she is, worked out... This is a wonderful story. Yeah. I know. I really want to know more about her, and, like, I Same. need to see this movie. Same. The... the Posse from heaven. I want to. I want to see more pictures of her. Oh, I've got plenty. They'll go on. Yeah. They'll go on the old Instagrams. You know, I went into this thinking like, oh, this is a story about this guy ruining his own career for this this like messy woman. Yeah. But in reality, no. he was the mess. Yeah. She was fucking great before she met him. She was still making really good money. Mm-hmm. Looked incredible. Was sort of like living with this man who didn't give a shit about her, but she didn't give a shit about him either. They kind of had a... Yeah. Sometimes that's like, that's a relationship. Some people just don't want to get a divorce and like they're fine just quietly hating one another and going about their lives. Well, you know, they had three kids, so I think they're staying together for the kids, but they also, they both, like they had an agreement kind of thing where they're both... And there's nothing wrong with that. Doing their thing. Yeah. And good for her. She's she's like, she's the best. Yeah. I really want to I see want this to be play. Her when I grow up. I know. I'm like, this is a great trajectory. I know. And the the way the press handled the whole thing when she Well, she's a woman. I know, exactly. Who's like, making oh, her own money, so they hate her. She ruined his career so that she could take advantage and she could build her own career off of he the, could the never. crumbles of his. Look at her. I know. And then look at him. Yeah. And then think about what you just said because you sound dumb. Yeah. She could buy and sell him. Totally. Like even Get before she's making five hundred dollars yeah. a week in the seventies. And it just makes me before she was still talking to him, but she was in love. I know she. That's the one thing. It's like, girl, yeah. you really. And Polly yeah. tried to tell you. Yeah. So that's the story of the the stripper and the congressman. I love it. This was this was a very this was a feel good story. Yeah, I feel really really good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, let me so slurp you. down this last little sip of my, yeah. my pink squirrel. So our our drinks are. 
let's let's average and say that they're empty. <laughs> so I guess we're done. They're um, empty-ish. Yeah. Still counts. America's history is juicy. We just add cream and um, creme de... What is this noyau, called? Noyau. Creme de noyau. Creme de noyau. Um, who, doesn't, who doesn't want to add a pink squirrel to American history? If you can get your hands on this really weird, obscure, kind of expensive liqueur, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, creme de cacao. Cacao There's, is in this Yeah, white well. creme de cacao. Yeah. Delicious. So thank you so much for listening to Beyond Reproach. This has been Stephanie Domingo. And Tux Lerzel. Thank you to Tim Clough, our editor, sound engineer, podfather. We could not do this without him. It would ruin us. It would ruin us. <laughs> and we would say that aloud. <laughs> and it would be true. <laughs> All right. All Thanks right. for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. Beyond Approach is proudly recorded in Bushwick, Brooklyn, on land belonging to the Lenape Nation. Please note we are not historians. We are just a couple of drunks who never shut up and love history. Full list of all source information can be found in the show notes on our website. Please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe. Written reviews are especially important. If you like us, please do one of two things. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or send this episode to a friend, family member, or someone who you think would be into it. Make sure you follow us on Instagram because we post our cocktail recipes the Thursday before each full episode. Please drink along with us if you are not driving. We also have a shop on beyondreproachpod.com. Get your merch, brand yourselves. We have exclusive content on Patreon where you can directly support the production of our show.